Okay, so hello everybody. Welcome and happy 4th of July. Um, on behalf of the Luke Chen Foundation, we're so happy that you're joining our weekly town hall meeting. Um, as you can see on your screen, we just want to remind you that we have a wonderful opportunity for practice, uh, the upcoming summer retreat, July 23rd to 25th. And without further ado, Lama. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Nice to see everybody. It's a beautiful day. Nice day to get together in the spirit, put ourselves together and collect ourselves. Recollectedness is one of the meanings, etymological meanings of the word mindfulness, sati, or smriti, collecting our thoughts, gathering our energies, and focusing. The mindfulness, as I like to call it, it's part of mindfulness, as well as friendliness and openness, openness to whatever is. So it's a beautiful day here in Connecticut. I'm at my niece and grandchildren's house, and they're here showing me how to meditate, how they meditate at school. And we're having fun. Um, is that it? Yeah, I did good. <laughs> And we're having fun. And fun is the essence, you know, like Zorba the Buddha says in the Tantric scriptures, in the, in the Laughing Buddha scripture, the Hivadra Tantra, Tantra, that we're all Buddhas by nature. You know, we're all free, we're all, all good by nature. It's only momentary obscurations that veil that from us. So as I contemplate and meditate and introspect, and trained mind and attitude transformation. When I become clear, everything becomes clearer, which is an important principle. Not just to try to go to different places and see different things, but to see clearly and see, thus see things differently, including oneself and each other, which will affect all of our relations. It's Interdependence Day. It's a good day to think about this timeless, ancient, fact of life, interdependence, in, interconnectedness, interbeing, as Thich Nhat Hanh coined it, and see through the illusions of separateness and not build walls around our heart and feel with others and empathize with them, and resonate with them, and vibrating with them moving together, vibrating together, and perhaps even being moved to help, or just to co-create or collaborate, or lend an ear, lend a shoulder, give of oneself, caritas, Christian charity in English, caritas, self-giving. That's part of the perfection of giving, dana paramita, the transcendental virtue, or the panacean practice of selfless giving the first of the 10 paramitas or cardinal virtues in Mahayana Buddhism. Going even deeper in a poem by Chukunima, and I think quoting the lineage masters, he says, non-attachment is the greatest form of generosity. So just think about that, cultivating non-attachment and letting go, not being too, fixed in one's ideas, or not to mention dogmatic, not being stuck on a point, or always going in the same acts, letting go, or letting come and go, letting be, as I like to say, as a meditation instruction, non-attachment, the greatest form of animosity. So it's a beautiful day. It's a holiday. Perhaps it's a family holiday. Anyway, we're all family here on this planet, this somewhat endangered, beautiful planet together in this miraculous life. I'm just to wake up every morning, just to have this breath go in and out. It's a miracle. It's living spirit. It's beautiful. The green of these rainy, spring-like summer days here in New England. Last week I was in California the heat, and yet still the wildflowers, 
and the sea creatures and the waves of the ocean. My buddy Timo and I, I know Timo led meditation last week. Timo and I saw a red-tailed hawk and found one of its feathers while we were walking the dog in the mountains last week. It was beautiful. It's just so miraculous. In the Himalayas, we have all kinds of uh, birds, of course, especially to mention is the Garuda, the celestial phoenix of Asian mythology. And as we know, mythology carries a lot of information and truth about things that could and should have happened, even if they may or may not have happened, like the phoenix, like dragons, like Ray of the Last Dragon. I saw that Disney animated film at kids' movie night at the Gillettes this week. Wonderful. In Mahayana Buddhism, the dragon is the guardian of wisdom, Prajnaparamita. Nagarjuna went down into the ocean, the depths of the ocean of wisdom, and brought back the wisdom scriptures, the Prajnaparamita sutras that were being guarded, that were secreted there, hidden there, secreted there by Buddha for discovery later, and guarded over by the Nagas, the Naga kings, half divine, half animal, dragon-like, sea serpent-like creatures. All of this representing some of the mysterious or unknown or even shadowy sides of our psyche. If we dive down deep, there's all kinds of things, all kinds of treasures hidden there, secreted there. As we're on the journey, translocating from me to we, from ego to the transpersonal self and so on. So now let's begin with our practice. I could talk all day. Interdependence Day is a good day to think about these things. The web of Indra, the overarching interconnectedness, the net of Indra in the heavens, according to Mahayana Buddhist scriptures, where every interstices is a diamond mirror, wherever the net crosses is a diamond-like jewel mirror, and that's each being and the infinite beings all reflecting and interconnected with each other. That's the net of Indra, of the Avatamsaka Sutra. Check it out. It's a beautiful image to think about and to be held by. I feel held and embraced by the Sangha externally, the community, the friends and family and teachers, but also more uh, deeply the invisible array all around and those who've come before the lineage masters and ancestors and parents and benefactors and teachers and friends and instructors. And even more deeply, just that glinting diamond light itself, the diamond sutra like light that sutures us back together that, that connects across the chasms in our inner conflicts that brings us together with each other and with ourselves in recollectedness, in remindfulness of those who have come before, whether it's patriotic or it's clan or it's our own personal lineage or spiritual lineage, the wise grandmothers and perhaps grandfathers in our life or whatever, the web of Indra that holds us and embraces us in the Sangha. Indra's net. It helps us see the light shining in everyone and everything, every moment. And that, as it says in a script, for, I think it's a Hindu script, for wherever I go, I see myself with a capital S. In other words, seeing into the mirror of emptiness, of subjectivity, recognizing my own projections, interpretations, and how I shape the world and experience it through that shaping, assuming responsibility, being at source or cause rather than an effect or victimized, being at source or cause, feeling one's own possibilities, one's own agency, one's own inter interdependence is also autonomy, not just independence, but autonomy within interdependence, one's own agency, to choose, to decide, to evolve 
to go deeper, to raise consciousness, to open the heart, awaken the mind, illumine the world, and be a light rather than a light in this restless, uncertain world, this, our violent times. And I bow to the Buddha, the light, the divine, the goddess in your seat, don't overlook them. Can we see the matching prayer on the board and everybody can chant? Prayer to the female, the great female lineage holder of Tibet, Machig Labdran, who lived 900 years ago. Oh, Machig Mahala Soa De, Ah, Machig Mahala Soa De. Oh, ma chig ma la so wa de ka po ye shi ki lo ma po wa hai shi ki lo ngun po hong ye shi ki lo po ku so ngu ye chit chen po ma yang chen ga Oh, my to you, I pray. Oh, my ah, my to you, we pray. Oh, my chick, to you, we pray. Empower us through the white, oh, empower us through the red, oh, empower us through the blue, oh, radiating, beaming, shooting from your heart, mind into mine, ours. So the, your heart, mind, and mine now is remaining separable. Transmit to me, to us, your enlightened, your awakened body, speech, energy, and mind. May I attain your realization of transcendental wisdom and be a benefit to one and all. A light in the world. Just breathing, relaxing, and smiling. Uh, breathing, relaxing, centering, focusing, smiling. Just sitting, just breathing, just being present and aware. The three pillars of natural meditation, so Gen meditation non-meditation, natural body, natural breath, energy, third, natural heart, mind, leave it as it is. As Long Champa said, leave it as is and rest the weary heart and mind. See through everything and be free, unencumbered, luminous, how sweet it is. Gazing into the light, whether your eyes are open or closed, gaze into the light, breathe out into the light, into space, into that undifferentiated diaphanous screen, screen of emptiness, full of light of reflections of little tigglies and floaters and dust moths and iridescence, luminescence. Make the light your object of concentration. Gaze into the light, breathe out into the light, breathe in out of the light, become the light, be light. Lighten up, brighten up. Oh, Illuminati, oh, lamps of this world. Be a lamp unto yourselves, as Buddha said on his deathbed. Be a lamp unto yourselves. Cultivate the inner radiance 
ratchet up your own innate brilliance and luminosity. Oh, human light bulbs. Identify with the supreme light with the capital L by which we see and are seeing that. Gaze into the light, become the light, be light. Lightening up, brightening up. This breath, only breath, enjoy it. Aware of it, this moment, only moment, enjoy it, be aware of it. Every single moment of arising, every appearance, phenomenal, onumina, fine stuff, enjoy it, see through it, inseparable from it. In the ultimate perspective, the big picture of Mahamudra, the ultimate stance, the innate, the natural great perfection, the lawful unfolding of things just as they are. See it as it is, not as you are, with projections, interpretations, just clear seeing. Watch the impermanent, ominous phenomena and you know, just rolling on like waves in the sea, like clouds in an infinite diamond-like sky, sky-like nature of the mind, one's own mind. Yumaho, marvelous. Mysterious, yes. Eye gazing, ear gazing, nose gazing, all the senses open, natural. The seminal lineage master Long Champa said, the six senses left in their natural state is the way of the natural great perfection of Rogue Chan. I'm not trying to numb out, I'm not trying to put in earplugs, nose plug and close your eyes and go somewhere else or get away from it all. Just breathing out into it all. Inseparable, mutual reciprocity, one and all, all in one. God and man, as they used to say in the old language, the relations of God and man, God and man, human, living spirit. And enjoy the joy of natural non meditation. Moment to moment, open awareness, seeing through, just being through, and through, through it all, letting go, letting come and go, letting be. Be maho. How sweet it is. Hallelujah. Eureka. Swaha. Yes. Thank you.
again. May there be peace and harmony in this uncertain world. May there be an end to pandemics, droughts, fires, floods, famine, poverty, oppression, inequality and injustice, violence at home and abroad. May the planet itself be healed, rebalanced, restored. And may we all together complete the spiritual journey. One family, one sangha, one satsang, one beloved community, one, one heart. Soul nurturers, heart centered. Seekers and finders, path openers, benefactors, service oriented bodhisattvas, awakeners. For the betterment of one and all. Ben, could we see the four bodhisattva vows translated from the Japanese? Thank you. All together, if you wish, sentient beings are numberless. We vow to liberate them. Delusions are inexhaustible. We vow to transcend them. Truth teachings are boundless. We vow to realize them. The Buddha's enlightened way is unsurpassable. We vow to embody it. gratitude and appreciation, humility, tolerance, seeing the unity and diversity, including all in our hearts, prayers and sterling aspirations, unfurling the flag of spirit, of spiritual life, welcoming all opening the wings of the heart, embracing all. <clears throat> Love to one and all. I bow to the Buddha in this in your seat, don't overlook it. <clears throat> the innate radiance, the Buddha within. Does anybody have any questions today? Unless some more time for questions. 
I hope you'll come to our retreat in mid-July. As the pandemic ends, we want to ratchet up our retreats again and get going with longer in-person retreats next year when it's safe. So please join us, support us, donate, become a member of Zogchen Center, do your practice at home and bring it into the world through compassion and action, love and action, seva, service to the highest through serving the lowest. Love and action, compassion and action. The Bodhisattva way of unselfish generosity, being an edifier in this world. Paying it forward, passing it on, preserving these ancient timeless wisdom traditions and passing them on, paying them forward with gratitude and valuing their efficacy, their marvelous efficacy, effectiveness. Sacred Dharma, the liberating Dharma. As this interdependence day, I wish may we all be free from our mind the forged manacles, as Blake called it. May we be free from our mind forged manacles and enjoy the inherent freedom and marvelous gift of being. Thank you. No questions today, Ben? Well, one is, Lama, do you intend to continue the Sunday morning town hall meetings when the pandemic ends? Yes. If people want to and people gather, and I think it's a beautiful offering and something we should keep doing and spread the word to those that might be interested, contributing, not converting anyone, but the invitation is there. I hope the pandemic will end, but I'm not sure that's the right way of thinking about it. It seems there are variants, it's morphing. It remains to be seen how dangerous they are, or how well the vaccines can handle them. The news that I read is that the vaccines can handle the new variants, but the science changes regularly as we look into it further. So maybe it's good to think about as we go forward, you know, keeping our mindful protocols up and taking care of ourselves and each other as there might not just be a discrete end to the pandemic. And also these coronaviruses, COVIDs, et cetera, have been around for a while. So they may be around for a while. So let's be aware and take care. And especially of the youngers, you know, younger in spirit, younger in maturity, or just younger in age, who may may not recognize its seriousness or be fully informed scientifically and socially, historically, or may not realize that they too can get it and die, or they can get it and pass it on to the vulnerable, like their parents and grandparents with underlying conditions who might die from it, and so on. So it's a good time to take care, stay aware, make it a mindfulness practice of health and hygiene, not just mental health, emotional health and spiritual health, but communal health, environmental health, physical health, societal health, all very important for a better future and a better life now. Um, Lama Glenda asked um, specifically about the, it's a little hard, I'm trying to translate the question, but um, about the light within, 
I think is the, the main gist of the question. How, um, you settle into it, how you settle into the light within your mind and form? Well, the light with a capital L, as Blenda would know, and I talked about this, I taught this all weekend, last weekend virtually at the Infinity Foundation retreat outside Chicago, but on virtual. Um, light is often or always associated with energy, with spirit, with movement, with illumination, with brilliance, you know, lucidity, gnosis, knowing, um, the burning bush in the Bible, the flash of light that through the tax collector, I think his name was Matthew, off his horse, and he became Saint Paul through his spiritual epiphany. Um, I myself have seen it. Some, I think Baba Muktananda teaches people to meditate on the blue star at their forehead, but it's the light in the distance. In the uh, Vajrayana tradition, we practice the clear light, the inner luminosity, and light up ourselves, turn the spotlight, the searchlight inward, and it's, it's mutually reciprocal. Cultivate in the light ourselves and also turning the spotlight, the searchlight, the introspective inwards. As they say, the last place people look for God is in themselves. So Buddhism, in fact, Tibetans are, are call themselves in Tibetan Nangva or insiders. And that doesn't mean like clique members. It means those, you know, who find it inside Nirvana in their own backyard or Nirvana inside samsara or the light even in the shadow. The inner light within ourselves by which we see in our scene, which I keep saying because it's meaningful to me and I've heard it in um, theological and uh, mystical discourses. I like to gaze into the light and practice sky gazing with my eyes closed into the light or even in the light, but in the light behind my eyelids and go into the inner light as I instructed, you know, in the clear light meditation, breathe out into it, breathe in out of it, become it, see through the illusion of separateness, be it, just be light, lighten up, illumine, and then embody it and radiate it in the world, however, whatever gifts you have, or whatever your best lights or best insights are. So that's how I do it in brief. And of course, there's also the sun, the moon, and candle flames. The three kayas are up, straight ahead gaze, upward gaze, and lower gaze. If you're practicing different light meditations, visionary meditations, and so on. So those were a few things. And you can read about these things in Tibetan Buddhist books, although they're a little impenetrable often. The clear light, the radiant luminosity, the inner radiance the clear light of death and so on, the clear light of the Dharmakaya or ultimate reality. Dzogchen tradition itself is often called the luminous great perfection or the natural great completeness or the radiant, the innate great perfection. So the radiance of luminosity is sometimes some, a metaphor for enlightenment, for insight, for splendor, brilliance, and so on. The sun at our heart, etc. Cultivating the sunlight at our heart and practicing loving kindness and compassion and forgiveness and equanimity, impartiality and um, sympathetic joy or rejoicing and the good fortune and success of other accomplishments of others all the boundless virtues is a great way to ratchet up the light and spread it in the world. Not just the light through the eyes, but the ears, the nose, the mouth, all the senses, the mind, the body, sensations, relations, and so on.
I remember when John John Kennedy, the late John Kennedy Jr., who died unfortunately in that plane crash near Martha's Vineyard with his sister, his sister in law, maybe 10 years ago in the summer. John John invited the Dalai Lama to a sort of uh, honor, oh, I don't know if it's a cocktail party, but like tea party or something in Manhattan at the offices of John John's, uh, John F. Kennedy Jr.'s magazine, which he started 20 years ago, W. And there were some important people there, you know, John Kennedy, the son of Jack one Onassis, Jack one Kennedy Onassis, you know, a lot of world leaders and important people in New York City and so on. So you can imagine who was there. Anyway, later John, John Kennedy said, when the Dalai Lama left the room, it was as if the man carrying the lamp had gone. So that's a little bit of that light from, it. let's call it an outside source. And one of the reasons that Tibetans call, call themselves Nangpas of insiders is because we could be like that too. We have that in us. It's not just that the saints have it or God or something apart from us has it. We have it too inside. It's a very important principle in Buddhism in the path of awakening. To awaken ourselves, not to wait for a lightning bolt as if from love, but to cultivate that, to seek it, to practice it, to de develop it, to look into it, ponder it, question it, penetrate it, become it, be it. So light's a great metaphor for all the spiritual traditions, obviously, in sacred art of all, all over the world, regardless of the tradition. We see halos, nimbuses, ra lights radiating, radiant heart, things like that, representing Great spirit, profound great spirit, spirituality, wisdom, love, light. Light is truth, truth is light, forever they be fair. Any other questions? I think we're just about at the top of the hour, Lama. Okay, some announcements, I wish you all well. Have a wonderful Sunday, Interdependence Day. Enjoy these summer days. Don't get lost in your own days, as it were. There's a way of losing oneself and finding oneself in intentionally. That's different than oblivion, losing oneself in unconsciousness. Best wishes, health, well-being happiness and harmony to one and all. Love. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear Lama. Um, we had a, a lot of uh, people saying that they would be very happy uh, if you would continue um, with these teachings. And just as a reminder, um, you don't want to appreciate the, the teachings of Lama, please consider donating to the Dzogchen Center. I posted the link um, or becoming a member. And once again, um, our summer retreat is coming up July 23rd to 25th. It's a really wonderful opportunity to, to go a little deeper with these teachings. Happy trails.